Today I am called upon to honour a man whose name will be joined in the history of our movement with those of Bertrand Russell, Robert Ingersoll, Thomas Paine, David Hume. He is a debater who will kick the stuffing out of a hapless victim, <laughs> yet he does it with a grace that disarms his opponent while simultaneously eviscerating him. He's emphatically not of the all-too-common school that thinks the winner of a debate is he who shouts loudest. His opponents may shout and shriek, indeed they do, but Hitch doesn't need to shout. His words, his polymathic store of facts and allusions, his commanding generalship of the field of discourse, the fork lightning of his wit, his witty repartee, his ready access store of historical quotations, his bookish eloquence, his effortless flow of well-formed and beautifully spoken words would threaten your arguments even if you had good ones to deploy. He has inspired and energized and encouraged us. He has us cheering him on almost daily. He's even begotten a new word, the hitch slap. <laughs> well, I'm overwhelmed, uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, and I did promise Richard that if, if, I, if my voice didn't go to rags, I would try and speak to you a bit, if that's all right. <laughs> How else were we going to reply to the increasing menace, rising menace of Islamic Jihad? How are we going to, uh, for example, deal with the emergence of probably the most reactionary papacy since the mid-19th century? Um, how, how are we going, excuse me, <coughs> I'm so sorry, I have to cough for a little bit. <coughs> I was afraid this would happen, I'm, I do terribly apologize. Um, a, a very reactionary Eastern Orthodox Church, if it comes to that, as well, the Eastern, Eastern Catholic forces. Thank you. Um, now arranged, many of them, behind the dark and sinister figure, of Vladimir Putin, uh, then one mustn't exempt, of course, the millennial settlers in Palestine who believe that by bringing in as many fanatics of Jewish origin as they can and forcing out as many Palestinian Arabs as they can, they may bring on the Messiah and indeed the apocalypse and look forward to the common destruction of our species with relish. And this, I think, lays a special responsibility upon us uh, uh, particularly because the backers of these people tend to be in the United States. And though many of them don't like the Jewish people and have uh, no love for um, all those who haven't accepted Jesus as their personal savior, they nonetheless are prepared to support extreme Jews rather as the rope used to support the hanging man, make use of him while he brings on the Messiah and then our reign of tribulation can begin too. We have the same job we always had, to say as, as thinking people and as humans that there are no final solutions. There is no absolute truth. There is no supreme leader. There is no totalitarian solution that says that if you will just give up your freedom of inquiry, if you will just give up, if you will simply abandon your critical faculties, a world of idiotic bliss can be yours. <laughs> you will certainly lose the faculties. Uh, and you may not know as a result that the idiotic bliss is even more idiotic than it looks. But we have to begin by repudiating all such claims. Grand rabbis, chief ayatollahs, infallible popes, the peddlers of surrogate and mutant quasi political religion and worship, the dear leader, the great leader. We have no need of any of this. And looking at them and their record and the pathos of their supporters, I realize that it, it is they who are the grand impostors. And my own imposture this evening was mild by comparison. Thank you very much. <laughs>